Welcome to Successful Parenting, where we, Jackie Rue and Robin Choquette, share practical skills for families to build resilience and healthy connections. As practicing professionals and parents ourselves, we hope this podcast is a resource for parents to grow, reflect, and learn more about themselves and their children. Our approach is simple, tangible, and most importantly, we lead with compassion for the integrity of the families we serve. This podcast should not be taken as medical advice and is intended for informational purposes only. We love our work and we can't wait to watch families gain confidence and open themselves up to new ways of successful parenting. Hello, Robin. Hey, Jackie. How are you doing? I am good. I think good. Yeah, I'm good. It's sometimes that you have to think about, wait, am I good? Yeah, I'm good. You know, I think as therapists, though, I think sometimes it's hard to say, yeah, it's difficult. And I, I, I've really tried this year to kind of change that because I think sometimes people, A, they don't want to hear it or B, they're just tired or I don't know. Do you know what I'm saying? Do you feel like you sometimes have to just say I'm good and move on and even though you're not? I'm not talking in a therapeutic relationship. I was just talking to someone. It, it's such kind of one of those just, I don't want to say general questions, but it's almost like if, if you're at a grocery store or at a store and someone says, how are you? And you stop and, you know, you go into a five minute yes. you know, um, <laughs> summary of how all the things in your life that aren't going well or all the things that are going well, you're kind of wondering, do people really want to hear this? You know, sometimes I think that we do need to check in with ourselves and, and be honest about how we are. It is awkward sometimes in terms of what to share. Because every once in a while, I will say to somebody, how are you? And they they will say, well, actually, you know, I'm not doing really well. And, mm-hmm. you know, they'll stop. And and I do, you know, I embrace those moments too, because I, I like when people are genuine and honest about what's going on. And, and I think really, most of us aren't necessarily good, but we're both good and, you know, have difficult things going on. So right. I think it is definitely just kind of a generic question, but it's one that you know, as part of a greeting that you often feel like, do people really want to know? Right. And then I think as parents, I think that's a hard place with kids. And I think it's okay to say to your child, I'm not doing okay, but I'm okay. You know, it's tough and I'm okay. I think it's okay to give both of those answers at the same time. And I think sometimes in that parenting role, it's hard to do that. And parents always feel like they have to be super tough. Well, definitely. And talking to a group of girls recently that are going off to college and their parents. And you and I usually have these conversations as, you know, seniors head off to college. But we talked about how, you know, as you enter college and you're a freshman, you will get homesick most likely and you will yes. struggle. And when you call home, it's not about falling apart. Parents then get anxious and trying to put the child back together. It's really about, you know, empowering and teaching those freshmen in college how to struggle and then kind of soothe themselves and then call parents and say, you know what, I struggled, but I was able to manage. I think so often parents kind of expect those calls of I'm in crisis, I'm falling apart. And then parents get overwhelmed and feel like they have to fix it versus, you know, really empowering the child to be able to manage. And so we do a lot of kind of practice scenarios before college students go off to prepare parents that you will get these phone calls that, you know, your child's struggling. They will get homesick the first six weeks, most likely. They will want to come home. But when they call, you don't need to answer every call and answer every text because ultimately you want them to be able to kind of work through it themselves and talk about it later. Those parents that believe they need to be there to answer every phone call, even if children are younger, you know, I need to answer every phone call, be there for every text. Those children never have opportunities to really learn and gain confidence that they can manage it themselves. Right. And I think that goes to a big piece this season that we've worked on and talked a lot about is that resilience, right? And and that is that bounce back. And I think it's okay for them to call and say, I'm having a hard time and I'm managing it, or this is what I'm trying. I'm hoping that this is going to be helpful, or I'm trying this and it's really not. Do you have any suggestions for me? And I think that's the big piece of one is what is the child needing and helping them to identify what they need. And as you said, not always giving them the answers and letting them find that answer. And I think that's a big piece of the therapeutic process, right? We don't always give our clients the answers. We help them to find the answers. And that's much like in parenting is you help 
the child to find their answers and what matches their needs. Because when we're quick and we're anxious, we're quick to give them answers. It's usually about what we believe they need or sometimes it's even what we feel that we need, and that will be the answer we give the child when they're struggling. And I think that's been one of those themes that we've talked about our second season in this podcast. I agree. And I think the other theme that really has stood out to me is just connection and focusing on how do we really connect with our children, whether it's through, and I know at one point we talked a lot about, you know, just the impact of technology and social media and Mm -hmm. And having time where everybody, you know, de-plugs. And we had many parents this season talk about they're not sure how to set boundaries with their children or they're not sure because the children are always tied up to screens and they don't know how to break them of that. But it really, I think no matter what concerning behavior that our, our child might be exhibiting for us, it really is about connecting and having those relationships with them. And I was just talking to a father about this, you know, when you say, I want to spend more time the child might say no, or the child might slam the door or say, I'm not going, especially if they're a preteen or a teenager. But it's more about, you know, continuing to find ways to connect. And if what you're doing isn't working, find something else. But, you know, you have to do it consistently, even if it seems like it's not working. Mm -hmm. Helping connecting and, and helping those relationships, I think has been such a huge piece of it. And, you know, when I think about our guests and you know, all of the individuals that's joined us this year in our conversations. And I found them just to be so interesting. You know, I've learned so much from our guests. A common theme has been the relationships. And you will hear our guests talking about that in all different kinds of ways. It seems like relationships has been such a key piece of what those guests have been talking about. And I just love that because my motto has always been, I become through my relationships. I like that a lot. And we've had several listeners talk about relationships that really require some healing or relationships either with their own parents or with their children. And, you know, I know we've talked a lot too about just kind of going off of the relationship piece. And, and I do want to add to encourage any parents out there or families that are struggling for some, you know, we all have seasons that go really well and seasons that are difficult, just some words of hope that, you know, I know, at least for me, I've definitely been there where there's been seasons that are more challenging or difficult, and they really do get better. And I think that's one thing we really try to to share on this podcast is that no matter what is going on or what our children are dealing with, things will change. Mm -hmm. This is what I would say to our listeners. If you're in that place of, you know, there's a loss of hope, Jackie and I hold the hope for you because we have worked for so many families and we do see that things do change and usually they definitely improve. And so if you're kind of in that place of not having the hope, look to those around you or look to us to hold your hope. And we certainly will do that in a way that I think can be comforting and helpful to families. Yes, I couldn't agree with that more. And yeah, I really liked this season. I think it was good and can't believe a whole year has passed. Uh Um, And I'm excited. I know at this point, you know, we are kind of looking at, you know, summer and we really spend a lot of time, you and I, in summer of just really focusing and and regrouping and kind of gathering things to prepare for season three. So I'm excited just to spend some time reflecting on the past Mm -hmm. year, you know, both personally and professionally and really be able to dive into some deep discussions next year, really focusing on supporting families, but also connecting with families. I, I learned so much from hearing from others. And and I'm really excited for some of the things that are coming up. Yes, absolutely. And I think, you know, we talk a lot about this, how important it is for self-care and you and I believe in it. In the summers, we do that regrouping and that's also our restorative time. And we do take a break. And some people ask, why do you take a break when you're doing this? Well, it's part of modeling for those around us that it is important to take some time to yourself and spend some time on just, I think, doing the things that help you to restore, connecting with others, and just really enjoy it. Besides, you and I love the summer. So (laughs) I think that's always a good thing about taking these breaks. So I'm really excited. And it gives us an opportunity to prepare, as you said, you know, what's coming in season three. I'm excited for season three, and I can't wait for our listeners to come back. 
I couldn't agree more on that. I appreciate everyone, and, and I think it's going to be good. And I think each year brings a different theme across the board. I think we work with so many schools, too, and agencies. And so, you know, just kind of staying up to date and taking a look at one of the things I think we'll be doing is taking a look and getting some feedback from all of our districts in terms of what challenges and also good things they saw this year so we can really come prepared for next year to share and you know bring some new insights so and I always appreciate our conversations Robin I I love working with you as you know and I think it's just so great to to work on this together same here thank you so much and thank you listeners we really appreciate you certainly reach out successfulparentingplan.com a successful parenting plan at gmail either way you can connect with us and we would love to hear from you if you have any suggestions or thoughts for season three thank you bye-bye bye thank you for joining us and make sure to subscribe and like us to catch our next episode where we will take you on a journey to find new ways of successful parenting